This is Rummy's Corner. Rummy's Corner. Lennox Lewis is the featured boxer in this edition of the Top 5 Notable Win series. In my honest opinion, Lewis has an awful lot of high quality wins that I view as being on a similar level, so choosing five is tough. This has been the most difficult selection process to date, and because of that there will be a little bit of bonus material at the end of this one. So let's start by going through a quick chronology of what I settled on as the top five notable wins during the powerhouse career of the Lion, Lennox Lewis. On October 31st, 1992, at the Earl's Court Exhibition Center in London, England, undefeated heavyweight contender Lennox Lewis squared off against Donovan Razor Ruddick. This was a WBC title eliminator that was scheduled as the first match in the first round of a four-man heavyweight tournament, which also included undefeated contender Riddick Bowe and undisputed world champion Evander Holyfield. Going into the tournament, many observers regarded Ruddick as the favorite to win it all. Things began with both big punchers showing mutual respect for the other's power. Both boxers were looking to establish their range, and there was a lot of tactical maneuvering for position. Lewis was getting his jab off first with greater frequency and accuracy, as Ruddick looked for a big opening, with Lewis effectively neutralizing his efforts. Towards the end of round one, Lewis nailed Ruddick with an explosive one-two. Razor was down and he appeared to be hurt. He made it to his feet and the round was over. Lewis was working his jab with authority to start the second round, and this created an opening for another right hand that sent Ruddick staggering. Lewis jumped on him and Ruddick was down again. Razor rose quickly and Lewis calmly marched in looking for the finish. Ruddick bravely tried battling back, but Lewis was overwhelming him, and before long, Ruddick was down for the third time. Referee Joe Cortez briefly hovered over the fallen fighter before deciding he had seen enough. It was a second round stoppage victory for Lennox Lewis in an absolutely devastating display of raw power and precision. On October 4th, 1997, at Caesars Hotel and Casino in Atlantic City, New Jersey, WBC heavyweight champion Lennox Lewis put his title on the line against Andrew Galata. At this time, Galata was coming off of back-to-back -back bouts against Riddick Bowe at a time when Bowe was widely viewed as the greatest heavyweight in the world, and Galata twice battered Bowe before losing both bouts by disqualification. So at this time, a fair number of observers believed that Galata was the most talented in a wide open landscape. Lewis began the fight firing off a quick jab, and Galata seemed a bit tentative at the onset. Before long, Lewis was already throwing in combinations, as Galata seemed to still be trying to feel things out. Galata tried charging in for an attack, and he had Lewis cornered, but he couldn't find what he was looking for. Moments later, Lewis clubbed Galata with a combination that included a huge right hand. Galata was hurt, and Lewis pressed forward, unloading relentlessly. After a slew of huge shots, Galata crumbled to the canvas. He managed his way back to his feet, but he appeared badly hurt and was on very unsteady legs. Lewis measured him up, cool as an assassin, and he attacked Galata with a devastating assault one big punch after another, most of them finding the mark with frightening precision. Galata soon succumbed to the overwhelming force and was down again. Referee Joe Cortez started his count before quickly waving a halt to the contest. It was a first round stoppage victory for Lennox Lewis and what amounted to a menacing exhibit of explosiveness and firepower. On November 13, 1999, at the Thomas & Mack Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, unified WBA IBF heavyweight champion Evander Holyfield had an immediate rematch against WBC champion Lennox Lewis. The two had first met eight months earlier in a match that resulted in a very controversial draw, where the majority of observers believed that Lewis deserved the victory. Things began with Lewis looking to establish his jab early on, 
and Holyfield was doing a lot of bobbing and looking to find opportunities to dart inside. A pattern emerged in the early rounds where Lewis was jabbing well, and Holyfield was taking the initiative far more frequently than the last time. It was a tactical chess match where each knew the other's habits and tendencies. Both were looking to set traps, but they were also looking to avoid walking into traps. Lennox was generally throwing more punches, whereas Holyfield was looking to pick his spots, and both boxers were having some effective moments. Holyfield was landing a good body shot every now and then, and he was using his own jab well at times. But it was Lennox's jab that was dictating the overall tempo and rhythm of the action. Holyfield had some of his better moments during the middle rounds, and round seven wound up being an action-packed scrap as Lewis and Holyfield battled away, with Lewis starting the round fast, and then Holyfield coming back strong himself. There were a lot of fireworks, and both champions were absorbing shots just as well as they dished them out. During the later rounds, it usually remained a tactical engagement, although it had scattered explosive attacks sometimes breaking out. Lewis was having his moments late, and Holyfield was still having some moments, but whenever neither guy was having moments, Lewis was still usually controlling the tempo with his jab. Lewis also was sometimes finding the mark with his uppercut, and he was simply throwing and landing more punches. It was a hard-fought contest, and at the end of 12 rounds, Lewis was awarded a unanimous decision. With the victory, Lennox Lewis had just become the new, undisputed, WBC, WBA, IBF heavyweight champion of the world, marking him as the first undisputed champion since Riddick Bowe nearly seven years earlier. On June 8, 2002, at the Pyramid in Memphis, Tennessee, unified WBC IBF heavyweight champion Lennox Lewis put his titles on the line against former undisputed heavyweight champion Iron Mike Tyson. This fight was several years in the making, and it finally came together after a compromise between HBO and Showtime to broadcast the fight in a joint effort. There was a heightened security presence inside the ring, as Tyson sometimes had a tendency to be a bit chaotic and unpredictable around this time, something that was on display when things got a little out of hand at one of their press conferences prior to the fight. The contest began with a heightened level of intensity, and Tyson was doubling up his jab and going right after Lennox. But Lewis was calm under fire, and before long, Lennox landed a nasty uppercut that got Mike's attention. Tyson continued trying to work his way inside, and Lewis would smother him whenever he got in too close. When on the outside, Lewis was trying to establish range with his jab. Tyson did manage to land a nice left in that opening round, but Lewis was able to do a good job neutralizing Tyson's early assault. In round two, Lewis started jabbing more effectively, and he was looking to sneak in right uppercuts whenever he could. Tyson wasn't moving very well, and when he charged inside, he was usually only throwing one punch at a time. Things soon settled into a tempo that was to the liking of Lennox Lewis, and once he got a better feel for the distance, Lewis began intelligently dissecting Tyson with surgical-like precision. Lewis was in complete command on the outside, and on the inside he was either shooting off some mean uppercuts or crowding Mike up tight. Tyson would often try going on the attack at the start of each round, but he wasn't especially successful when he tried this. Lewis usually fended him off, and then the familiar pattern would resurface, with Lewis jabbing well on the outside, neutralizing Tyson on the inside, and sneaking in some snappy power shots when he could, many of them uppercuts and straight rights. To his credit, Tyson was absorbing these bombs well, even if he was offering very little resistance in return. Lewis was becoming more and more dominant, and Tyson was on the receiving end of an awful lot of punishing shots. This technical mismatch became more and more one-sided as the action progressed. In round eight, Lewis nailed Tyson with a couple of wicked uppercuts and a right over the top that buckled Tyson, and he touched the canvas, making it a knockdown. Tyson appeared spent, but he bravely battled on as best he could. Lewis was simply clobbering him, 
And before long, Mike succumbed to the assault, and with a helping shove from Lennox, he was down again. Referee Eddie Cotton counted Tyson out, and it was an eighth round knockout victory for Lennox Lewis. On June 21st, 2003, at the Staples Center in Los Angeles, California, WBC heavyweight world champion Lennox Lewis put his title on the line against Vitaly Klitschko. Lewis was originally scheduled to face Kirk Johnson, and Klitschko was scheduled to be featured on the undercard against Cedric Boswell. But Johnson pulled out with an injury, and Lewis and Vitaly both agreed to face each other instead on short notice. The action began with both boxers awkwardly pawing around trying to get a feel for the distance. Before long, they were both throwing meaningful shots, and Klitschko was the one who was getting the better of the exchanges. Both boxers were throwing stiff jabs, and Vitaly was finding the mark with some crisp right hands that were nailing the mark. At one point in round two, Klitschko appeared to have Lewis a little dazed, and Lennox was getting tagged with some really nice shots. Lewis kept his composure, and he was landing some good lefts, but Klitschko was consistently landing more and landing big, and the second round ended with both men slugging it out. Lewis was more aggressive to start the third, and he began fighting a rougher and more physical fight. Vitaly was still firing back effectively, but he had suffered a cut above his eye, and Lewis wisely began focusing more attention towards that cut. There were a lot of fireworks that saw both huge heavyweights clubbing away at one another with ill intent, and both boxers were landing and receiving some very heavy leather. As the rounds progressed, it continued being a competitive affair. Lewis began sneaking in some vicious uppercuts into his attack, and Klitschko's eye was looking worse and worse. It was a tremendous display of heart and determination from both boxers, and they both continued having their fair share of thunderous moments. As things approached the conclusion of the halfway point, Lewis and Klitschko looked exhausted as Vitaly amazingly absorbed a monster uppercut. Prior to the start of round seven, Ringside physician Dr. Paul Wallace instructed referee Lou Moret to stop the fight. It was a sixth round technical knockout victory for Lennox Lewis in what wound up being the final fight in his long and illustrious career. Now before I get into ranking any of what I consider the top five notable wins for Lennox, I think it's important to go through some of the other victories that have very strong cases. Because to repeat what I said earlier, I think Lennox has a lot of very good wins that are all at or around the same level. For starters, there was the title defense in his first reign against fellow countryman Frank Bruno. This was a very difficult fight for Lennox. Bruno had put forth an outstanding effort, and Lennox scored a dramatic stoppage in round seven. Then there was the war he had against merciless Ray Mercer. This was a real entertaining crowd pleaser, as Lewis and Mercer engaged one another with a heightened level of heart and intensity. This one was a tactical slugfest with a lot of explosive moments for both boxers. And at the conclusion of 10 incredible rounds of action, Lewis was awarded a majority decision. There were many observers who believed that Mercer deserved the victory, but I wasn't one of them. There were a lot of close rounds in the fight to be sure, but I personally believe that Lewis earned and deserved the nod in a hard-fought fight. It was a sensational effort from Lennox and definitely a standout victory in his storied career. Additionally, Lewis avenged the only two losses he suffered in his professional career. He won the rematches against his conquerors Oliver McCall and Haseem Rockman. The rematch with Rockman is particularly impressive. After being stopped in that shocking upset, Lewis came back strong and regained the heavyweight crown. And what better way to do so than by avenging one highlight reel knockout with another? There was also the title defense in his second reign against Shannon Briggs. And at that time, Briggs was the legitimate lineal heavyweight champion. Briggs had Lewis in some serious trouble early and Briggs can truly bang. But Lennox persevered and he battled back to blast Briggs out of there with an impressive stoppage victory. Lewis had overcome adversity in this one, and he dropped Briggs three times before all was said and done. 
Great win, that one. When Lewis faced Michael Grant, this was at a time when Grant was widely viewed as the consensus number one contender. In fact, Grant was being built up by some as the heir apparent to Lennox Lewis. But Lennox proved to be too skilled, too smart, and too powerful. And he made very quick work of Grant, dropping him four times en route to a second round knockout. And then at the time that Lewis faced David Tua, Tua was widely regarded as the most deserving title challenger. A lot of people fancy Tua's chances in this one. But Lennox thoroughly outclassed the Tua man en route to a lopsided points victory. It was a terrific effort from Lennox, who executed his game plan to near perfection. His tremendous technical skill set was on full display in this one. So Lennox had a lot of very good wins, and I think you could reasonably replace a lot of my picks with some of those victories. But if I had to rank the five that I view as being his most notable, number one for me would have to be the rematch against Holyfield. Lewis and Holyfield were universally recognized as the top two heavyweights at that time, and Lewis put forth a solid effort to become the first undisputed champion in nearly seven years. The ironic thing here is that Lewis was probably more dominant in their first fight, the controversial draw. Holyfield did put forth a better effort in the second fight, but I still firmly believe that Lennox was doing the better work throughout most of those rounds in the rematch. Number two, I'm going with the Tyson victory. I don't rate this as one of Lennox's best wins, because at this point Tyson wasn't much of a threat past a couple of rounds, and it had been a very long time since Tyson was regularly competing at the highest level. But this was still definitely one of Lennox's most notable wins. It was a fight that was several years in the making, and it actually wound up being the highest grossing pay-per-view event of all time back then. Number three, the fight against Vitaly Klitschko. This fight happened right after Lennox had pretty much basically cleaned out every big name from his era, and Vitaly represented the next generation. Indeed, Vitaly was widely recognized as the best heavyweight for a couple of years following when Lennox retired. So in this fight, Lewis overcame adversity, and he battled his way back to victory against a tough prime game opponent. Of course, the cut left an aura of controversy and a sense of unfinished business, and a rematch never materialized. But regardless of that, Lewis showed tremendous championship heart in his final title defense, in the bout that will forever be known by boxing fans simply as TKO 6. Number 4. The victory against Razor Ruddick was the win that effectively landed Lewis his first championship. Lewis never won that belt inside the ring, as him and Bo never reached an agreement. Bo vacated the belt when he tossed it into a garbage can, and Lewis was awarded the title based on the strength of his victory against Ruddick. And at that time, Ruddick was held in very high esteem. It was largely based on his two game but losing efforts against Iron Mike Tyson, but Ruddick was held in very high regard back then. And finally, number five, the victory against Andrew Galata. I think this victory tends to be vastly underrated. Going back in time to the start of 1996, Riddick Bowe was widely viewed as the greatest heavyweight in the world, despite the fact he didn't hold a major world title. Bowe had twice bested Holyfield, who had twice bested Tyson. And at this point, Lewis's reputation was still suffering somewhat from his knockout loss against McCall. So when Galata twice battered Bo with a unique blend of size and power and technique, the boxing world took notice, despite the fact that Galata ultimately lost both of those bouts by disqualification. Galata had still administered a severe beating upon Bo, and at this time, there were a lot of people who viewed Galata as the most talented in a landscape that was wide open with uncertainty. Lewis never got the chance to face Bo, but he did get to face the guy who twice gave Bo all he could handle, and Lewis dispatched of Galata in a mere 95 seconds. The destructive manner of this victory made such a huge statement at that time, and I view this as one of the most important performances during the superb and decorated career of Lennox Lewis.
So what do you think were the top five notable wins for Lennox? Please share your thoughts in the comments section. Thanks for watching everyone. Hope you enjoyed. Have a great night.